everyone. My name is Cynthia Henry, and I am the personal librarian for the College of Health and Human Sciences. Today, we're going to learn how to use the library website and also how to find materials uh, in the stacks on the shelves here in the library um, as well. So let me go ahead and get us sharing. Okay, here we are on the main page of the library, and we're going to learn how to use this um, uh, to our advantage. Um, this is the URL, but I always like to remember library.ttu.edu, as that is a URL I can remember, and then I can type it anywhere. So that is what we're going to, uh, so if you type that, then it will resolve to this um, page as well. So we have several um, libraries on campus. Um, we have Architecture, um, Peter's Family, Legacy, Southwest, plus the Law Library here on campus, and then the library that is I'm using currently is the University Library, um, and uh, this is the tool for all of these. So all of these libraries are in this search. This search is called our OneSearch, and it, it's more than just our catalog anymore because it just doesn't have the materials we have in the building, but it has um, database. You may find a database in the search. You may find a newspaper in this search that we only have online. You may find all of our online materials. Um, our government documents items are listed here. Um, so just lots of things are in the search more than just um, uh, what our old library catalog would do. Before we kind of get into that search, though, let's go ahead and see. Over here, anytime you see this little green icon, then you can um, uh, click on that and it will open this. And so um, you can go ahead and click chat now. And whenever we're green, we will um, be available. And so a librarian is um, waiting to answer any question that you have. So maybe you hear something that I talk about, but you don't quite remember how to do it um, today, and you can ask here, or you've had some other kind of question that you need to ask, you can do that there as well. And so that could be as simple as, what time does it close today? Although the hours are listed right here, or to, um, you know, can you help me find this item? And we'd be happy to do that. Um, if we're not on, then the Raider bot will help you as best it can. But we cover chat from 10 to 8 most days. So I'm going to go ahead and say no thanks to that right now. And I'm going to point out a few other things before we get searching. Here are our quick links. It's our hours were open for the day. And our workshops and events. I like to point this out because um, it will... Uh, uh, take you to a screen that um, lists all of our workshops. So if you need to learn a little bit more about maybe how to put a literature review together, or um, if you wanted to attend a, a library event, it would be listed there. Plus all of our makerspace workshops are there too, and those can be quite fun if you have a little bit of time to learn how to do a 3D print or learn how to do a laser cut, you know, um, and they do other kinds of crafts as well, like learn how to crochet or knit. So we're really trying to get um, a wide variety of materials in there. So um, some academic, some fun. So, okay, um, let's go ahead and do our search here. Our search is called OneSearch. And I'm just going to type in uh, financial planning so that we can start our searching. Oh, there it is. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and it will run it. So this is just our basic search. And let's talk about this page now that we've landed here. This first item is a journal. And that is uh, anything, you know, is uh, journals are published in all different kinds of uh, formats. So that could be an annual publication, a monthly publication, a weekly publication, even a seasonally publication. So um, you'll find all of those here. You can see that it tells us that um, this line tells us what building, uh, which library this item is in, if we're going to look for the print. So that's in the university library. And the university library is the library with all the 
arches across the top, the big one that is just right across from the student union building. But we also have, like I was saying, the Southwest Collections is in here. Um, Peter Family Legacy is in here, the Law Library, and the Architectural Library. So you see which building you need to be going to, what area of that building, which is the Stacks. The Stacks is on the west side of the University Library. And um, we have, we're kind of two buildings in one. So we have two sets of elevators. You have to be on the right set of elevators to get to the right floor. So the Stacks elevators is kind of next to the room with all the computers if you've been into the library and you would see that. So if you were coming from the student union building and walking in, that set of elevators is the east elevators. Don't use those, walk around to the other side and use the west elevators. And they're really labeled stacks elevators and uh, east elevators. So you should be able to see the signage around the elevators. And then we would go to floor two and then we would need this call number. And so some people think they can just take the HG upstairs and find it. You really need anything that is listed here. Um, so sometimes it's a little shorter number because it's a journal. Sometimes it's very long and you need all those pieces. So make sure you take those. If you get upstairs and you can't find it, feel free to come find me or go back down to the main floor, the ground floor, and um, ask for assistance, um, a student or um Somebody at the desk would be happy to help you. So we can also see this um, item online. And so let's talk about this a little bit. It tells me that it's from coverage is from 1997. Since there's no end date, then we're continuing with coverage. So until present. Um, but if there is an end date, that means that we may have stopped our subscription to this or um, maybe this journal had stopped publishing. And that is why also here, originally it started in 1983. Now we don't have all the back files, but we have quite a few of the back files. So we have it back all the way to 1997. So you could still find some of these older ones, possibly up here. And then everything else is online as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So this item is an ebook. And we could use the online access here. This is an article and we have a new tool that we're using. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the database. And you would be able to find the um, PDF right here. So um, that's a little bit of what we're seeing here. As you kind of scroll down, you can still see the other items that are listed here. Um, what if I wanted to narrow this down because we have still quite a few results here? I might come over and put in a publication date and maybe I want to just have it from like 2000, uh, let's say 2020 to now. So we can do that. We've narrowed down quite a bit there. We can see that we could narrow down to just peer reviewed journals if we wanted to, or if we wanted to, um, which means peer reviewed journal articles, or we could look at some other kind of material type here, let's say we just wanted to look at um, ebooks, and I'll go ahead and click on that, and we'll be narrowed down even more. Now, all these are being activated up here, so if I wanted to look at something else instead of just ebooks, all I would have to do is click that X, and it would resolve it back to just this one filter of the 2020 to current. Okay, so that is a little bit about how to search in this uh, area, but let's go ahead and uh, look at for newspapers. Now we could get into a newspaper database, um, but sometimes I just like to type the newspaper name here um, and I'm gonna type in the Wall Street Journal. Now we have to talk about that a little bit, right? Um, the Wall Street Journal is a newspaper, even though it has the journal title in it. But um, we'll see that as we move through this process. So it's looking for that. And now that we can see these, it does call it a journal here. And, and the journal here is that there's not really a newspaper icon in this search. And so it's really just a container of a lot of things. So like a journal has articles, a newspaper, that container journal has a lot of articles within the newspaper. And these are individual items instead of a whole series of items. 
um, and then a book or a book chapter. I think those are the main things that you're going to see as icons up here. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this Eastern collection. And I know to do that from what we were just discussing, we can see that it has started in 59 and it doesn't have an end date. And the one right below it looks like it's an archive because it is looking from uh, items from 1889 to only 1959. So if we wanted something older, then we could be searching this collection. Now let's look at this. It says there's a comma there. That means either 19, 1891 or 1892 is not complete. And so they put that break. Otherwise, they could have said, you know, just one dash all the way to 1922. So you can look at those if you're interested. But let's go ahead and get back up here. I'm going to click on this online access. It's going to open the platform or the vendor that this um, um, the, the Wall Street Journal is stored in. And we can see, oh, I'm going to accept all my cookies. We can see um, that it's in ProQuest is the vendor that this Wall Street Journal is displaying for us. And I really like ProQuest to see um, journals, uh, or I'm sorry, see newspapers. Um, you can search within this publication. So we'll go ahead and do financial um, planning again, just because that's what we're kind of talking about today. And I'm going to do search real quick. And so I'm searching all the items from 1959 to right now. So we can see that we have uh, 20 results on this page. We have almost, you know, uh, well, I guess 16 and a half uh, thousand materials here. Maybe we only want to narrow our date range down. So maybe let's go ahead and do the last five years as typical. And so it updated and now we only have that. Then we can kind of come out here and look at something. Um, let's see here if there's anything. Oh, look, let's see this. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the title there. And that's going to open the item. And so this is just showing you that you can look at other things. I'm just going to close that. But here is the full text of the item. Or I can go ahead and download the PDF. The other thing we want to maybe talk about is how are you going to collect your citations? Now, you can write it out yourself, but I don't want to do that. So you may want to use the site here. And I'll try to point that out as we move through different platforms so that you can use it um, to your best ability. Um, so I typically would want to be using APA 7th edition, but not annotated. However, if you're doing an annotated bib, you might want that. And then it will be here. And then I typically use the RIS, not the EndNote. Some of these do not work always. Um, and this one will allow you to drop it into any one. You can do it into EndNote or into Mendeley clearly here or into other products. And I really think our Zotero. Um, and those are the ones that we really champion on campus. Um, those products I'm talking about, EndNote, Mendeley, Zotero, are all citation managers. And if you um, have not explored one of those, that might be a good thing for you to do. I'll show you some more information about that. It just helps you keep all your citations in one place so that when you start writing, you can have it write it while you're kind of cite while you write. You can just have it plug it in as you're writing um, a paper or an article whatever. And so I'm not going to follow this through, but I could click this and it would allow me to put it into my EndNote. And I'm going to click done. And so then um, this is the information. And as we said, we could read the whole thing here. Anything that is highlighted is what we searched for. So you could see how that is um, uh, pulling out that topic of what we were looking at. And this is from uh, October 28th of 2023. So I'm just going to go back to my results so we can see a little bit more. And I'm going to go back one more page here. Oh, sorry. Circles us around a bit. Let me go back one more time. Trying to get back to here. This page is what I'm looking for. Because I do like that search within the publication. But maybe I really know my professor has asked me to look at a specific um, 
uh, paper. So I can come in here and find that um, issue, whichever one it is. I'll just look at June of 22. And then I'm going to say update that. And so now just the issue of uh, the one we've selected, June 30th of 22 from the Wall Street Journal is displayed down here. So I can browse that. I can also go ahead and search this again and use my date range if I wanted to. Or I can also use this search within the issue. And so sometimes that is helpful, especially if uh, professors have said, oh, I really want you to look only between this and this or um, I want you to find an article out of the most recent issue, and then you would be able to do that as well. Okay, so that is a little bit about the Wall Street Journal. Now, I really like ProQuest for displaying uh, newspapers. So instead of getting back to our main search on the library website, I'm just gonna stay in this database and use a new search. So I'm gonna use these three um, lines as my menu. And then I'm gonna pull up publications because we're gonna look for another journal. And remember, uh, a journal, I mean, another newspaper. And newspaper is just a container of all that, and it's a publication. So I know that that gets confusing when we have the draw Wall Street Journal or like the local newspaper here is also a journal. It's the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. And so um, sometimes that is a bit confusing. So here I can now search in this database um, whatever um, newspaper I want or whatever um, publication I want. But since I'm looking for another newspaper, I'm going to click on newspapers down here. And so that's limited what we're going to search. And I'm going to search um, uh, the New York Times. And it's going to find it and it's automatically put us on that search just like it have for the Wall Street Journal. So I could search within this publication. I can search a Pacific um, issue if I wanted and do my search within that issue if I wanted to. So Now and we can see here it's telling us that it's available from 1923 on. So that's a big set of the New York Times that we could search right from this location. So if you wanted to do a historical look at the financial planning, you might look at this and, and see um, what was being printed in the newspaper maybe in 1950 about planning for retirement as opposed to what is being planned for currently. So, okay, so then the last newspaper that we do want um, is the uh, Lubbock Avalanche Journal. And... Um, I know that that's a local paper, so I'm not sure that ProQuest will have um, collected it. So I'm going to go back to my main page and type it in here. And so we're going to type in Lubbock Avalanche um, Journal. It's a journal. I mean, it's a newspaper, but it has the word. I've, oh, I've added an extra O. Oh, no. There we go. Okay, here it is. And again, just like the Wall Street Journal, it has this morning edition or it has the um, holdings from, you know, before 1959. And so this is an older collection that is probably just in print or on actually uh, film, microfilm. Um, and that's a whole other thing. If you ever need to use microfilm, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you. And so, oh, and look, it's even telling you microfilm here in the Southwest collection. You can read it over there. Or more likely, we're all just going to use this online access, and it's from 2003 on. So we don't have this as far back as we do other collections um, online access. We may have to, if we wanted to look at something from, you know, earlier than 2003, we'd have to really get to the microfilm and use a machine to run the film through so that we could look at each individual uh, page. All right, I'm going to click on the online access here, and that's going to get us into the platform that the, Aval the Lubbock Avalanche Journal is located in. Let 
Let me just take it a second. I'm going to let it load. And this is another database that we have as Access World News. And this is a good one um, as by News Bank um, because quite a few, uh, th this is a large database that collects a lot of newspapers. And in fact, qu quite a few uh, Texas newspapers are here that are kind of smaller that maybe if you're from a small town, you might check to see if we have it here, um, you know, the New York Times and Wall Street Journal are collected by a lot of libraries and a lot of platforms, whereas the Lubbock Avalanche Journal may not be collected by as many or, you know, something that is like um, Plainview. I don't even know Plainview's uh, newspaper, but uh, that might be a good one that we could search. OK, so here. This platform allows us to also look at the recent issues. So if you just needed to read the most recent copy, um, you could do that. I'm actually recording this um, August 16th. And so you can see it does take it a little time to be published. And then they have to get it um, uh, into the database. And then the database has to push it out to us. So we're about 24 hours maybe a little more than 24 hours, 36 hours um, out for the Lubbock Avalanche. I think we would be a lot closer on uh, the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. But so we could pick by day, browse a date for the past his, uh, year, or we could go ahead and do our um, searching. I'm going to go ahead and do fi financial planning and um, click enter. And that kind of triggers the search. And this is a slightly different way to um, find the materials. Um, so this is really the text from the article. This is telling you when it happened, the title, who wrote it, what it's from. They're all going to be from Aval uh, Lubbock Avalanche Journal because that's what we searched. But so this is just financial and planning somewhere in the text. And while that gets us somewhere... Um, I kind of would like it to be focusing on financial planning. So since I want those words to be close together, I'm going to put quotes around them and then we'll only see that come up. So see now you can see they're always together. And so you can see this preview. I don't find this as useful because it just gives you a little snippet, probably not much more than what's already there. Or you can just click on it and it will actually take you to the record of the item. And then you can see the whole item and you can find that. Um, and uh, you can download this if you wanted to. You can cite it if you want to. Um, you can let it read it to you if you want to, which I find useful sometimes. Maybe I open this up and maybe I'm cooking dinner and listening to my research at the same time. So um, you might try that. Um, and you can print it if you wanted to here. So this is talking about so many businesses opened in 2023 in Lubbock. Wow, over 100 businesses. So they're really talking about those in this um, article. So that's how you would search those three uh, newspapers. And that's how you would search the, uh, the, on, the one search here. Um, and anytime you see the double T on the library website, um, it will just bring you back to this page. So you saw that in the catalog, I just clicked on that real quick and it came back here. So a lot of times we would use the database as A to Z. If you don't know the database that you might be looking for, you could do that. Academic Search Complete is a really good one. It has almost every topic on campus um, located um, in there. So if, if you're kind of stuck and you're not finding what you need, that might be good. Or it might be a good time to reach out to me as well. Um, and then let's go ahead and get into our personal librarians um, icon here. So we're going to click on that. And then we're going to scoot down to the College of um, Health and Human Sciences. And then we're going to scoot down to personal financial planning. And then we're on this page. This is a page that I've put together that is um, really set up for all of your research. I'm just going to clean up this window here. Um, and so here is my 
uh, information. So you can email me directly from this page. You can schedule an appointment with me from this page. I always do encourage you to use these. That's what they're there for. Each appointment is about 30 minutes long. Um, if we need it to be that long, maybe we've found what you need in 15 minutes. You don't have to hang around, clearly. But uh, And if you thought that you might need more than 30 minutes, feel free to just book two back to back if you want. Once you open this, it kind of tells you um, some information about how I can help you. Um, and it has my phone number and my email again if you need it. Um, but then you can come down and just select a date that you want to select and pick on that and then pick a time that is open and free. And you can um, pick any time you want. And once you do that, then you just enter your email and then it schedules an appointment with me and with you. And uh, it will only allow you to schedule an appointment if my calendar is open and ready for you. So. If I have something booked, it won't have the time over here. That's why you can see the difference of, um, I think on the 19th, I just have a few appointments, but if we get all the way out to here, then I have lots of appointments on that same day. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And then here are the databases best for searching for personal financial planning. And then we have some other options down here. We have some data sets, how to search the thesis and dissertations, some of our book, ones. This is the library catalog that we were just in. And um, then this is how to make Google Scholar work for you. We'll kind of cover that again. And then I try to keep um, some information here, a video um, that will kind of um, direct you to some information if you need that. This one happens to be on grant development and writing and how to use our resources for that. Um, and uh, then this one is on Ryan, and it's a workshop on how to use the Ryan tool to do a systematic literature review. Okay, so let's do some database searching here. Let's go ahead and get into Business Source Complete. Um, that is a large database that if I knew I needed to be looking for something for personal financial planning, but I wasn't quite sure where else to be looking, I would come here. If I needed to find uh, information on a company, I would get into Merchant Online. Um, Emerald is a good one. It just has some good research in it. This is a little bit about um, marketing research. So if you wanted to look at consumer behavior, this would be a good place to do that. Value Line is very much like Merchant Online. Um, both of these have the same kind of comparative information. I just like the platform on Merchant more than I do Value Line, so that I, I tend to lean to this one. Science Direct and Scopus and Web of Science are good um, databases to be looking in. Here's Academic Search Complete on this screen, another good broad database. Now, maybe because how we look at personal financial planning, uh, we also look at behavior of people in that. So the social sciences is a good place and psych info. If I was really looking for behavioral information, I'd be in psych info or psychology and behavioral sciences. So consumer behavior as well as, well as in business source complete. Both of these are good to be looking for how you're going to predict uh, people's um, outcomes. And then the foundation directory online is just uh, information about um, uh, foundations that give money. And if you wanted to look at different foundations on how to see if you could get a grant, who they've been granting their money to, what types of, um, uh, you know, platforms are kind of supporting. So um, let's say, you know, I was really looking at financial literacy in high schools. Well, you could go in there and see what um, corporations were really supporting financial literacy and at the high school level and see um, that information. It's not as direct as that. You have to kind of dig through there, but it would help you identify them. Okay, so I would think uh, we're going to get into Business Source Complete. Now, this is an EBSCO database, and we have quite a few um, databases from EBSCO. Um, and so I always try to indicate that this is 
really the title is business source complete, just like we saw on the page before, not EBSCO. So EBSCO is the vendor, the large vendor, and business source complete is the title, the database that we're really searching on the platform, the, the EBSCO host. So that's kind of like vendor, um, you know, like Nabisco to a cookie. You want to know what cookie you're searching for. So Oreos are made by Nabisco, but we want to eat the cookie. We don't need to know that uh, Nabisco necessarily. Okay, I'm going to click on advanced search. That just gives me a few more boxes here to be searching with. Um, and I kind of like that as it depends on what I'm searching. Maybe I only use one box, but maybe I do need to add another box or another box. And I can always add another box just by clicking this little um, icon, the plus or the minus, and those would be there. Now let's kind of set our parameters down below. I never click on the full text because then that limits me to just this database. Whatever this database has in full text, if I click that, it will only bring that information back. And since we can look at all of our databases through this search, we don't want to click that because we may want to get an article from another database in our search here. But I will click on the peer reviewed because um, really at this level, you should be using peer reviewed unless the assignment is saying you want to look at a newspaper article. Newspaper articles are not peer reviewed. Peer reviewed is um, any of the terminology like peer reviewed, referee, jury, that's all the same terminology. And it just means that that article has been sent to a panel of experts in that field um, before it was published into that journal. And so um, I just really think that peer reviewed is the quality that we want to be looking for here. So it gives it a, a little bit more authority if it's peer reviewed. All right, let's kind of think about what we could be searching um, for uh, financial planning. What about a financial literacy? I think that might be a good one. I'm going to grab that real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and click search now so we can see how that narrows down. But I don't always click search every time I just enter something. So we're at 3,000. Uh, we have our peer reviewed uh, limited here still on this page. I mean, it pulled it over from the other page. I'm going to go ahead and update my um, dates here. Now you can type in this box or you can just pull this across. I'm going to go ahead and use the 2020 again. Um, that'll give us about five years. Um, we're just shy of that because of, you know, uh, we're not quite at Christmas yet. Okay, and then um, let's see. Let's do consumer behavior. We were talking about that and behavior of uh, people. So let's talk about consumer behavior. So financial literacy and consumer behavior. And what do we end up with? Okay, 54. That's a pretty good set. So if I get something more than 100, then maybe I use too broad of a term and I need to kind of bring it back down a little bit. So I try to aim for about 100 or less. And um, if you have 100 here, you could just add another term or you could maybe think instead of just consumer, you might have in consumer behavior and that would bring it down, I bet you. Um, and then if I got too small, if I was down to like, 15 or 20, um, that would be maybe too small. I might have missed something big by using some certain term that I use, and I might want to broaden back out a little bit. So just think about that. And if you're having a hard time getting the right database and the right subject terms, that's what these keywords are called, subject terms. Um, and so you you might reach out to me. Because I, I really don't want you to struggle. I don't want you to sit there an hour and be like, I cannot find anything. If you've been searching and you tried a few different searches, you tried a few different databases, shoot me an email and say, hey, I've been searching here with these terms and this is what I'm looking for. And uh, one good tip that I always try to share with students is uh, sometimes they will have a big paragraph of what they're looking for. But then if you just ask them, can you tell me in one sentence what you're looking for? Then if you take the nouns out of there, usually you have some really good keywords. So think about that as you're doing your own searching. OK, so let's talk about this a little bit here. Um, let's see here. Um, 
So you can see we have some different um, languages. This is written in Portuguese. So I'm not going to open that because I, I can't read Portuguese. But if you speak Spanish and uh, find a Spanish uh, article, you want to read it, that's great. I mean, if you can read Portuguese, that's great. Um, we have lots of languages around. Um, let's see here. Though. Oh, this is a good one. Let's kind of look at this. So this is a systematic review on that. And that just means a systematic review is just looking at a lot of articles on this topic. And then we kind of compile all that information into this article. So it has a lot of wealth of information from several articles, not just this article. Um, so let's talk about this page. So we've gotten, uh, we've clicked on the title to get into this record. And here is the title. Is Consumer Subjective Financial Wellbeing, a Systematic Review and Research Agenda. Then we see our authors are listed next. Then we have our source line, and this is where it's been published. So it was in the International Journal of Consumer Studies, and it's from July of 21, Volume 55, Issue 4. And as we talked about journals, remember they can be published weekly, monthly, seasonally. Um, and so this issue number is pretty important. And sometimes that is sitting in parentheses. So if you see a number in parentheses behind the volume number, excuse me, that just means that that's the issue number. And um, if you see just a word like fall, spring, winter, that means that this is produced seasonally. And don't let that throw you. Just put it in uh, your citation like you would any other issue number. And then here's our date range, uh, our page range. So um, here are our subject terms. So let's talk about these. Authors supply keywords, an author knows what he or she has been writing about, and these are the terms that they identified. But these subject terms are more important because that's how this article was indexed into this database. So our keywords up here are some of our subject terms. So financial literacy is a subject term in this article. So if I were to click on this, it would run a subject search. I'm just going to do that real quick for us so we can see that. And it identifies how to run that subject search, but it already did it. And so then I can add in, again, my consumer behavior if I wanted to. So I'm just going to click back so we're back into that record. Sorry, it wasn't clicking, I guess. Okay, and then... Uh, here is our abstract, and here is a lot of our um, terms. So anything that is typed in the top up here, EBSCO highlights down below. And so you can see we don't have behavior right next to consumer all the time, but I think that is okay. If we wanted to be very specific with the consumer behavior, we could put our quotes around that again, and it would uh, bring only those back that have that sitting within uh the consumer behavior of that right next to each other is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so if I wanted to read this, how would I go about doing that? I'm going to come over here and see there's a PDF. Um, the HTML full text, it's okay, but a lot of times it will not have any charts, graphs, pictures, anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and open the PDF. And it's going to load up for us right here. And um, we would then be able to read this and um, look throughout it and see all the charts and graphs and tables and figures that may not be um, just in the HTML. So I'm going to come back up to the top. The other thing I like about the PDF is if you forgot to write down your citation information, um, you can usually build it from the PDF. Um, which you would not be able to from the HTML, I'm, a, I'm pretty sure. They usually don't have any of that. They just kind of strip it out. Of course, you would have the title and you would have the authors. But look, you can even see when it was accepted. And here's the DOI number, depending on what citation tool you're using. And then here is the journal shortened name, but it is still there. And the page numbers are embedded here. So that is always useful. Now, if we wanted to download this or print it, we would want to use these two icons. We would not want to use this print icon out here. It would just print this outside uh, frame. 
So make sure you're aware of that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click back. It is really having a hard time today. Sorry. Um, the other thing is I'm going to point out where you can click the citation. If you're in the record, if you click on the site, you could get the citation and drop it into an email or to a Word document if you wanted. Now, <clears throat> even though it says it's APA 7th, I do always check this. Sometimes the capital case is off. Sometimes um, the numbers are off or the page number or the year is off. But this one looks pretty good. So we even have the DOI here. But it has our thing in it. I think that would be removed in the, um, you would just put in the 10 to dot 111 to the end. So you might check on that. So see, there's one thing that might be wrong in here. Um, and remember, citations are just created from the material that some human entered at some point in the system. So humans make mistakes. So just check it. The other thing is if we go back to our results list, we can collect those. So maybe we downloaded the PDF already, but I'm just going to collect that in uh, multiple places wherever I need to. Um, and then at the top here, I can get all the citations at once and move them over into my citation tool like EndNote or Mendeley. Although Mendeley will read the citations from the PDF itself. So that's the nice thing about Mendeley and then Zotero. So it just depends on what tool you're using. Um, so now we saw this one and we can see the PDF here. Um, but the next one, it doesn't have it. So how would we go about seeing that article? I'm going to go ahead and open this. <coughs> Sorry, I have a little bit of a cough today. Um, so um, again, we're in the record, and we just clicked on the title to get to the record. And here's the title, I'm Struggling to make, e make Ends Meet, Can Consumer Financial Behaviors Improve? And then the author and our source again. Here's our subject terms and then our abstract. So now how would I go about reading this? I'm going to use this find it. And as I was saying in the catalog, um, the find it has improved quite a bit before when we clicked here, it would just be, we would be clicking on the online access and we'd have to get either this platform or this platform or however many platforms were available here. Um, but now since we're using this new tool called LibKey, it is actually displayed the PDF right here. So I can just click on this and it takes me directly to that PDF. So I don't have to look through the platform to get to the right article to get this. And so uh, that is something that the library has really worked on in the last year or so to make it easier for you to find the research that you're looking for. And then we would be downloading or printing from here. So I'm just gonna get back in here and we're back on the um, record in the catalog and then back to our database. And then I'm going to go back to my results list for the database. Gosh, it is really taking two clicks to do that. And then um, one other thing I wanted to point out here for you is, um, as we're looking at how to use this um, tool, is this is cited references. So these are the articles that this article looked at. So it its references that it has listed at the end of the paper there are now here and we can look at these. And when I click on this, then they're all active to look at, to either find it or to find the full text. Those are all the references from that original record. And I'm just going to go back to our results list there and we were clicking here and then this means that this article has been cited in 21 other articles in this database so this is kind of looking back at what this article looked at the research it already looked at and this is looking forward as this is new articles that use this article from 21 as a reference 
So you can kind of see if we had kind of looked at the dates for this, they would all be older than 21. And if we look at this, now we should see that all the articles are later than 21. So that kind of helps you see, I'm looking back at other history that other people have used, or I'm looking forward at how they've used this article to build on new research. Okay, let's see if we get back in here now. And um, the only other thing that I thought we might look at, I thought this was an interesting article on the sensitivity predicts financial health. And it's really looking at um, whether people are really kind of identifying, considering their financial um, goals when they're being, you know, uh, pressured to uh, buy something. So in our consumer-based um, society, we have commercials and we have TikTok and we have shopping on Instagram. And so... You just uh, can so easily click, 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 and now you bought something. Um, this really kind of talks about that. Um, and you could um, look at the images before you even got into the article if you were interested in that. So I could pull this up and see what it is really looking at there and seeing this chart before I even got into the article. So sometimes those are good to um, have. Um, and then the HTML full text is just below that. So if you just keep scrolling down, you would have that information. You would get to that. So, so that's a little bit about how we would search for a keyword search. Let's go ahead and look if we were going to do a search for a journal um, title specifically. So I'm going to click on the basic search. And I guess I could be back in the advanced search. I just refreshed it. I was trying to clear out my search. So we, all of our limiters are clean and we're, we're starting fresh. So now I'm going to type in uh, the journal of financial plan, uh, counseling and planning. There we got it. And so instead of just leaving it as an open search here with any keyword, I'm going to go ahead and get down here to the publication name and I'm going to click search. And so we can see that all of the results now are from the Journal of Financial Counseling and Planning. Now, what would happen if I was uh, going to be looking for the Journal of Financial Planning? Since this title has all of those same words, we might have a hard time finding it. Let's see what happens when we do that. Journal of Financial um, Planning, you can see it is kind of sitting inside here. Let's go ahead and run that search and see what happens. So it is looking, this search is looking for any of these words in the publication name. And it found Journal Financial Planning, but it found it in the wrong journal. So now I want to go ahead and put the quotes around this and it would help us keep those closer together. So now we're finding the Journal of Financial Planning instead of the Journal of Financial and Counseling, Financial Counseling and Planning. So um, some other ones that we might be looking for in this class would be uh, investment um, advisor. There it is. And we can search that. And we can look at these. Now, anytime you run a search here and then you want to uh, add in another term, let's just put in planning and see what we get with this. So now we're running a search. It has to have investment advisor in the publication name. And then it has to have the word planning somewhere in the article or the title or the keywords or the subject terms, I mean. And so now we found something that is in investment Pfizer with the word planning. So this is estate planning. That's even in the title estate planning. And so we can see that's what we're looking at. Let's look at a few others. So, oh, look here. 
So this is in Investment Advisor from 2015, and it's talking about financial planning. So that is how you kind of do some different kind of searching. Maybe you really want to be looking for some kind of planning, but you're not sure if you want to do estate or financial. If you just leave it like this, you can find all of that. Um, and I was trying to think of um, another way you could kind of run that is, I guess we could do finance. And if we put an asterisk now, so we just type in F-I-N-A-N-C, that would get finance or financial. So let's see if we this word this search gives us. So we're still looking in investment advisor. They're all from investment advisor. But now we've created a root word search with this root of finance. I guess you kind of, without the E, and you have the asterisk. So this allows you to search for anything that starts with F-I-N-A-N-C. So that is really good um, when you're looking for some different kind of terminology sometimes. So it says financial planning is what we, financial. Let's see if there's anything else here that we can see is being bolded. Uh, financial planning and financial services. I thought we might find a finance, but oh, there's a finance. There we are. So you can see that. Some good tip about this is if you were looking at the difference between men and women, I don't know if that's really been studied in uh, financial planning. And so we're still in a publication name. We may not find anything like this, but if you wanted to have a uh, men or woman, man, woman, women, um, you can just type in that with the asterisk. So this would be for man or men. And if you put the W in the front, it'd be woman, woman. And we can do a search. Let's see what's happening with that. Oh, and it worked well. So we found women. And we may only find women as the plural, but you can see that is the case there. I haven't seen a singular yet, but so that's how that kind of works if you use the asterisks. So we talked about how to use the asterisks to replace the root word or a vowel in the center of a word. We've talked about how to use our quotes and we've talked about how to look for a publication name in the database. So those are a lot of things that we we're talking about. We can collect our citations and move them around. We can get to our um, PDFs or if we're going to have to use the find it. I think that's quite a few of those. We've seen how to get to the uh, citation for the APA style seventh because that's what we would be using. Some things that I haven't talked about yet is if we're using a find it and we can't find it, Let's see if we can do that. I don't know what we're going to find if we just click here real quick. Oh, this is a perfect one. So this is uh, one that we don't have access to. And I know that because there's no full text available. So I would use this request it. So I'm going to click on that. And it's opened my interlibrary loan account. And I'll show you how to set yours up in just a second. And it's filled in all the information that I need to request this. So all I'd have to do is hit submit request. And then in about 48 hours during the business week, um, so that's Monday through Friday, then this would be sent back to me with the um, full text of it. So that usually comes in a PDF platform. And uh, you would get an email to your TTU email address. And you would come in here and see electronically received items. I would open that and then I would find the PDF that um, said that was related to that article. So um, I can open any one of these and I can print it and store it just like I would found it in a database. So that's how that works. If it's something that is actually a physical item that has to come from another library to us, because you can request any one of these items. Um, so let's say we were getting a book. Maybe if that's coming from Austin, 
that might be, you know, two or three days. But if it's coming from Oregon, that's going to be a little bit longer. So what happens with that, you'll get an email that you can come in and pick up that physical material and you would do that on the ground floor in the library where it says interlibrary loan. And it's just near the computers on the um, wall with all the offices. It's kind of in the center. It has a sign for you so you can find that. Otherwise, they would be delivered electronically. So, but as we've talked about that, um, it's during the business week. So if you do a lot of research, like uh, Saturday afternoon or Sunday night, that you're trying to plan for a paper, if you want to write a paper on Sunday night, you don't want to request all of those uh, the same day. You won't get them. You would have to make sure you've requested them. Like Monday, Tuesday is what I recommend, but you could push it to Wednesday maybe and then write the paper Sunday afternoon and evening. I, I typically did that. And so maybe that's my own style. Maybe other people are planning uh, different times. But just really um, think about when you need your research completed so that you'll have the resources to write the paper at the deadline for um, your assignment. So let's talk about how to um, get this set up for you. I'm just going to get back into this tab where my picture is. I'm going to scoot down here and um, click on this interlibrary loan. This will allow me to get to our interlibrary loan site. We're going to click sign in. And it's um, back to my account. But if you've never set up your account, once you click that sign in and uh, sign in with your e-rater, or if you've already signed in with your e-rater in that session, then it will just land you on a page where you fill out information about yourself. Make sure you use your TTU email address as that's the only one that we're legally allowed to email you that the PDF has come in due to copyright. So make sure you're using them. And we can't email you to Gmail or Yahoo, that kind of stuff. Um, and then um, I think there's some other information in there. It looks like this. Um, you don't have to fill in your address uh, because you would be picking it up, um, especially if you're here. Um, if you happen to be a distance student, you would want to make sure to identify yourself as that. We double check that with Banner, and then that gives you a little bit more privilege where we'll ship the item to you um, uh, to your home if you're at a distance, you know, if you're taking a class from Austin, for example. Okay, so let's talk about this page a little bit more. Make sure I haven't uh, missed anything. Oh, we haven't really talked about Google Scholar. Let's talk about that real quick. Um, I'm going to open a new tab and just get into our Google Scholar. To make this search, um, the library, the TTU library, I'm going to set it up. And that information is on my page right here. So if you ever needed to see that again, you could see that. But uh, you can just click on uh, the three lines in the upper left-hand corner. Then we're going to look for settings at the bottom of this list, of this menu. Then we're going to be in the middle of this menu under library links. And we want to make sure... We type in Texas Tech only, click search, and we want to make sure we've checkmarked Texas Tech University Libraries, FT at TTU Lib. That means full text at TTU Lib. That's what we want it to remember. Um, you can have the open world cat if you want. That's just a large library that uh, catalog that most of the world kind of participates in now. And then we're going to click save. I'm not going to Click, I'm not going to check Health Science Center or School of Law as those have different privileges online than I do. So now we can do the same kind of search that we've been doing. Let's see. Oh, here's financial literacy. Let's just do that real quick. We can narrow our range like we've been doing since 2020. That's what we've kind of been using as our standard. And then here we are. Um, at the bottom. I mean, here we are on this page. This is our results. So this page to me is a little overwhelming at first. So this is the item that we're looking at. And we can see the next one. I know this is a journal because I can see the journal of consumer studies right here. And it's from Wiley Online. 
Um, and we have the authors here. Let's see if we can see. Sometimes you will see a book and it will have a book icon. It says book kind of in parentheses there in brackets. I don't see one here. I'm not going to look for one per se, but if you ever see a book, that usually means we will not have the full text available over here, but um, most articles we have an option. So instead of clicking here on the open web and I'm looking at that record somewhere where it doesn't know that I'm necessarily a TTU um, user, I'm going to go over here and use this FT at TTU lib. Now you can see that the PDF is right here by Wiley. And if you know the author and you feel confident that that's the place it's going to go, then you can. And I think, you know, Wiley or ProQuest, I would probably be fairly confident that that would be okay. I don't know this organization. So I wouldn't want to click there because, you know, I'm trying to make sure that I don't get any um, viruses on my computer. And I know this goes straight to the TTU um, website and it's safe. So I'm going to click on that. So the full text is going to sort it over here. And we have that library key option sitting right here. So I could click on that PDF. We've done that several times. I'm not going to do that now, um, but that would show us how to get directly to that PDF. And if we needed to cite this and use the direct PDF, we can always use a citation right here. Oh, in fact, here's a straight export to RIS. And that RIS is that citation file. Um, that's how citation managers read uh, citations. So it's .RIS. So I could click this, download that, and it would put it up here. And I could see that that .RIS would be ready to go into my EndNote or my Mendeley or my Zotero, however I wanted to do that. Okay. So I'm going to click back because Google Scholar doesn't throw to a new window like the databases do. So here's my results list now when I clicked back. And so I can look at the next one. This says full view, and that's kind of the Health Science Center is overlapping with our um, IP range here. And so that's what they say is full view, and that's okay to click on. I would say that's fine. Um, let's see if we see an article that doesn't have this. Oh, here's one. So we don't have this. I wouldn't necessarily t click on this uh, .NET article because I don't know where that's really going to take me. I'm going to click on the Chevrons in, in Google Land. That means more. You can see that there. And then I can see get it at TTU. So this still will open up an access where we can request it. See, we have no full text available. I can request it. And it will pull in the information. So I didn't have to retype all that and just quickly submit it. And then in 48 hours, I would be able to read this article on the menu here under electronically received. So, so that is a lot of information we just covered. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, if, if you want to use the chat, you can feel free to do that as well. I'm going to stop sharing so we can maybe see each other's faces for a second and then um, let you be able to remember I'm Cynthia Henry and I'd be available to help you at any time through appointment, making a phone call, email me directly. I'd be happy to help you. Thank you.